Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use GraphQL. So in the previous video, we finished off the front end of our app. I know there are some work remaining, but I will do that after we finish the backend because the backend part is very important. The only remaining thing about the backend part is the product page here, the customer and the setting. The setting is not very important, but the product should display all the products that user have added to the wishlist. It is very important for the shop owner to see which product has the most wish list or which customer have the most wish list item in their cart. So that is what you will learn. But before doing that, as I said, we are going to use GraphQL. If you are not familiar with GraphQL, in this video, I will show you how you can easily test any Shopify GraphQL and you are going to learn about a, an official app by Shopify too. So if I come to the documentation of the Laravel Shopify, Let's see where they say the, how you can use the GraphQL. If I scroll down to the usage, which is the part they have the most description in the code. So far, they have the, the only thing they have it here is like API REST, which we learned in the previous videos, but the graph, they don't have any example. To learn more about the example of using GraphQL, you can just come to the author's name here. He has another uh, Laravel package which is for Shopify called basic Shopify API if you come to this one This has all the description for you Now the Laravel Shopify is using this package. That's why it is very important if you Understand it and if you come to the rest API they have all the documentation What I am going to do is I am going to scroll down to the GraphQL So the table of content is also very clear so you can click on the GraphQL and this is how you can use it. They also have a basic example here, which is the API GraphQL. But if you scroll down, they also have some practical example. This is how you can use. You can use the API GraphQL and then go to the shop and get all the information about the shop. Now, if you do not understand how this stuff is going to work, I'm going to show you the easy way to run all your GraphQL queries. Now, the purpose of GraphQL is to make requests like return faster because GraphQL is working like this. You get the data that you need. It is not like REST API. You send it to an endpoint and it returns all the product. In here, it is different. For example, you say go to the shop and take first product from the shop. Also, if you are taking first product from the shop, I just need the handle and the ID of that product, which makes it a little limit like not limit it makes it easy for you to see like which data you need just take those data and GraphQL is very important because in the next job you are going to apply they are going to require you to know GraphQL that's why it is very important to know also now how you are going to run this in your uh, code that is what we do in the next video but for now how you can test it uh, you can come to the shop Shopify documentation for the GraphQL we learn about the rest. So if you come to the GraphQL references, it has another app called Shopify GraphQL app. Click on the app here. You can install it on any store. After you install it, you can run your GraphQL queries easily. And after you test this and if it works properly, you can use that in your app also. So here is how I can install it. So I will just copy the URL of my store. Write it down here. It is just for development. You can install it on any store. Also from the scopes, I'm going to check everything because I might need to come back and say, okay, I need access to the content read or the theme read. So I'll just check everything and say install because I need those access. Now it will come to the authentication. I am going to install the app. After that, it is going to redirect you to the GraphQL app here. Now, this is the example that they are going to provide for you. If you run it, this play icon is going to run and it is going to return null because it says, take this product. This is the ID of the product, which does not exist, of course, because they are giving you that one. If you click in the history, it is going to show you the history of the query that you have run. This is the, the history that I have. So if I check this one and run it, it is going to return the first product handle here. It is very easy also. Now, uh, the documentation of the GraphQL is very hard to understand in Shopify, 
but if you want to like understand which data you need all you have to do is come here press enter and using control space you can open the intelligence and it is going to show you which data is accessible in this object so you can go to images and run it again it is going to return the images for that now images also have a node that's why you must provide the first or last so this is how it works you can say images id the same way that you have for the products you can say first let's say 10 it is going to if it doesn't have a 10 it is going to return the most amount it has here is how easily you can get those it is going to return the id and also press control or command space and you can scroll down and see which more information you want you can see original src which is going to be the source of that and this is going to be the source since this product have only three images you can see only three of them now if you come here and say i want two product or let's say five product run it again it is going to return that amount of product again i'm going to remove this image for now which i don't need run it again this is the two product we have in our store now i will remove everything from here and there are some other examples also the example that you see here is not working so because the documentation is not updated so if i copy this one let's come to the graphql app here i will paste it you can click the pretty it will make it pretty but if you click run it is going to give you an error like shop does not have the the product object so the documentation is a little out of date but you can understand how everything is working if you come to the shopify official documentation so again i will search for shopify graphql coming to the documentation as i said it is also very hard to understand the authentication is already done for us you can click on the query root and in here you can like learn more about how you can do all your query now create on the queryable object it is going to show you all the objects which is available for you to use for example if i scroll down to the bottom it is going to show me the product and if you come here they don't have much example it is going to say that the only scope you need is read product but if you scroll down to the bottom of this page they have a example that they provide you here it is not also going to work for you if you just copy it because the product id should match the exactly the same way that you want now if you scroll up these are the options that you can use let's say seo using tags template prefix and these are the options that you can use now if you come here you can still just write down let's say some other properties which is available here now what i am going to do is i'm going to say create it at run this it is going to send the request no this request is not going to be sent to your store it is going to send to their store so it is going to run and return those information now for you to run more queries you can come here and run them now this is a quick query run that you can use now you can copy this one and uh, use it in your app so we are going to explore that in the next video but it is very important if something is not working here it is because maybe this is out of date or you should try to check out the shopify documentation for that and make sure it is working before you run your query make sure you test this in the shopify graphql app that way it is going to be easy for you also the versioning is very important at the time of this recording this is the latest version that i am using so i hope it has been informative Thank you for watching and in the next video we will see how we can query the products that we want and display it here.